What's up, everybody? Abe Kislevitz here. Happy 2022. It's been a little while, but I've got another tutorial for you today. Have you ever been in Premiere editing GoPro footage or any footage and thought, I wish my computer was faster? Well, today's tutorial is going to be very exciting for you because we're going to touch on proxy editing. What is it? How do you utilize it? And then also talk about a secret in Hero 10 where it makes proxy files for every single video file. You just have to know where to find it and how to integrate it into Premiere. Thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. We're going to touch on that a little bit later, but first let's dive right in and get to the tutorial. For those of you that don't know what a proxy file is, it's when you're working with files that are basically duplicates of the files that you're working on. And there are kind of two ways to go with proxy files, um, especially when you're using a camera like a GoPro where it's trying to do um, highly compressed video in a small format. So that's HEVC. One way you could go with proxies is you proxy to ProRes or a really high quality uncompressed video. And that's a lot easier for a computer editor to handle. So these uh, compressed videos like HEVC and H.264, they're really great for saving media because it's high quality at low file size. But then once you're in an editor like Premiere, it's got to use some decoding hardware and software to be able to kind of unpack that compression and then play it back real time. So now that computers are a lot better, you now have the ability to play back these HEVC files and H.264 files. But as they get bigger resolutions and higher frame rates, they still are pretty hard for a computer to handle. So that being said, you could proxy a file to ProRes, and that's basically unpacking that uh, compression once. And then you've got that video file that you can use in all of your projects. The downside, I would say, to proxying to ProRes is for somebody like me who shoots a lot of GoPro footage and I'm not really sure what I'm going to use, it's a huge waste of space on my hard drives. And I also don't like deleting project files and stuff once I'm done. So I prefer to go to the other route, which is proxy files that are extremely low resolution, low quality, low bit rate. But since they're so much smaller size, they're a lot easier for Premiere to handle. And so most hardware these days can play back a 720p file or a 1080p file without problem. Um, you run into problems once you get up to 4K and 5K, 60 FPS, 120 FPS. So what I like to do is proxy all of my files to the low res stuff. When I'm editing, I see a lower res video, but the quality is really not that much different. It's not going to hinder my ability to see if there's a moment or not. And then anytime I actually want to see the high res stuff, I just click the toggle proxy button, it switches it over. And then anytime I hit export or anything, I don't even have to worry about it it'll automatically swap those back and make sure it's exporting out at the full res. As I mentioned before, I'm just going to run through how to find proxy files, how to activate them in Premiere first, and then I'll talk about how to create proxy files for the files that you already have if you don't have proxy files made. And then last but not least, we're going to touch on that secret Hero 10 formula where it's actually making proxy files for every video file. I'll show you how to find those and what to do with them. So I've started a project here in Premiere and I just wanna show you what it looks like when I'm in full res and I'm trying to play back 5.3K 60 or 4K 120. This is a 4K 120 clip. And in Premiere, it has a lot of trouble scrubbing through and playing back smoothly. So the gist is, if you're going to be using these GoPro files from the Hero 10 that are huge resolution at really high frame rates, most computers just can't even handle it. Proxy files are an absolute game changer if you're trying to edit video and do it swiftly and with flow and you're not really being held back by your computer, which oftentimes you are. And most people think there's really nothing I can do other than go out and buy a brand new MacBook Pro, then I'm going to be able to edit quickly. And let me tell you, you might be right, but you might also get slowed down within a year or two when files get higher resolution, higher frame rates. This is the best alternative because it works on any different hardware. It really is a super fast flow once you've got it all linked up and it's not that hard to get it linked up. 
So the very first thing that we need to do is make sure that we can see the toggle proxy, which by default, it's not here. So we're gonna come in here in Premiere and click this plus on the button editor. And this little guy, toggle proxies, is what we want. So you just click and drag this down in here, and then you get it there. And if it's not showing up on this side, um, let's just make sure it's here as well. Once you click it on, it works for both your source and your program monitor. You can see I can click it and that toggles proxies. That'll show you what it looks like when your proxies are turned on. The next thing that we need to do is be able to see if the proxy files are connected. And in your project window for Premiere, you can see there's all this different information. We need to get the column that is proxy because it'll show if a proxy file is attached or not. And what you do is you just right click in this top little header area and you go to metadata display. In Premiere Pro project metadata, swivel that arrow down and scroll down until you see proxy. And while you're at it, if you wanted to, uncheck all the stuff in here that you don't really want. And then you could hit save settings here and save it as something. Mine is called uh, minimal Abe. Okay, and you'll see down here, now I just have the file name, the frame rate, the video info, duration, status, and then proxy. You can see that there are no proxy files attached. If you want to make proxies for these or attach proxies, you basically will just go and select them all, right click, proxy, create proxies. There are a couple caveats with this because Premiere's proxy creation is not perfect. It actually uses Adobe Media Encoder, but the first thing is aspect ratio. So you wanna make sure that your proxy files aspect ratio matches the original aspect ratio. The second is frame rate. I'm not sure why, but Media Encoder will only render stuff up to 60 FPS. That's okay because anything higher, it'll just duplicate frames, but that's something to watch out for when you're using slow motion clips. Normally I would click on video info. So I'm kind of organizing by resolution and that helps me get the aspect ratio of each. And I've created a preset for proxy files for all the different aspect ratios that you could run into. And I've included these for download in the description below, which is gonna help you a lot, I'm pretty sure, because the step of proxy files that always confused me was, is it the right aspect ratio? Is it the right frame rate? What the hell am I doing? I've included all of these different aspect ratios, including 16 by nine, vertical 16 by nine, so nine by 16, four by three, vertical four by three, or three by four, finally 360, which is a two by one. So I even use this for my max files once I've converted them into that 360 equirectangular video. When I add FX reframe, sometimes when I'm trying to do a bunch of intricate keyframes and stuff, it gets really slow. So you can just pop in and rip a quick proxy of that file and then it's going to be low res and it's going to be incredibly fast to do all of your keyframing and stuff in. So what we'd probably do is sort by this frame size, the video info, and then I can see that I have 3840 by 2160 and I know that's 4K, so that's 16 by 9. I'm going to select all these. 4000 by 3000 is 4 by 3, so I'm going to skip over those. And then I know 5312 by 2988 is the 5.3K stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these. Now I can right click and go to proxy, create proxies. To get the ingest presets in here, hit add ingest preset and then locate the ingest presets from the download that I have provided. The presets that I've given you guys are going to be proxy ingest 16 by 9, proxy ingest 360, proxy ingest 3 by 4 vertical, proxy ingest 4 by 3. This one is a proxy ingest of 16 by 9. And then you can browse to where you want it to save. I typically just do it into a single destination in like a project that I'm working on. And then you hit OK. You want to make sure that you have Adobe Media Encoder installed on your computer. And it's going to go ahead and add those all into Adobe Media Encoder and rip all of these proxies. It totally depends on how fast your computer is with how long these proxies are going to take. If I have a big project, I usually try to line them all up into the media encoder and then either go to sleep and let it run overnight or just go out and do something for an hour or two and then I'm set for the rest of my project. All right, I'm going to actually stop there because as a Hero 10 user, I've actually done way more work than I need to because Hero 10 is actually creating proxy files for me. 
Before I get to that and how you access those and deal with them, it's a perfect time to take a little break. Visit me up at Mammoth Mountain to give you a little info about Storyblocks. Take it away, Abe. You've heard me talk about it before, but I'm here to give you the good news once again. Thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. It's an awesome subscription service that has everything you need for editing video content from After Effects text templates to sound effects to video overlays and stock footage. I use the film grains and film burns all the time in my video edits. Best part is it's all royalty free so you can use it for your own projects and your commercial projects as well. There's a subscription model for everybody. So check the link in the description below. Thank you to Storyblocks. Let's get back to the video. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed hearing from the more fun me that's outside of Mammoth, but hopefully we'll get back up there soon and visit that other version of me. So now to the actual GoPro files. I have my raw files here that I've taken off of my SD card and put onto a folder. And I usually organize my folders by camera. So I've got my Hero 10 ice skating camera and uh, a Hero 10 max lens mod camera. The proxy files are actually in the form of the LRV files. I'm sure you guys have seen these on the camera and you're like, what is the LRV? Why do I need these? I'm sure that most of you have deleted all of these on any past footage but I'm here to tell you to save the .lrv files from your SD card into a folder, and these will help you in proxy editing. The interesting thing about the LRV files is they're made to be those low resolution preview files for the app. With Hero 10, now we have enough power that it creates an LRV file for every single video file. And what it basically is, is a low resolution video file with low bit rate, but it matches the aspect ratio and frame rate. And so I was seeing this and I was like, wait a minute, if this is a low resolution with a low bit rate and it's got the same frame rate and aspect ratio of my original files, this has got to be able to be used as a proxy file. I started saving my LRV files and in something like H10 ice skating, I would isolate all of these LRV files by sorting by kind. And then I would put these into a folder so I'd go new folder with selected items. Let's rename this proxy and we'll save these new folder into a folder called video. And every time I offload an SD card, I do this. So I make a video folder, a proxy folder, and then a photo folder if I have photos. What we need to do with proxy is select all of these and we'll go to rename, which is a batch rename, and it's got to find and replace. So basically what we want to do is change .lrv to .mp4. That surprisingly works and it turns it into an mp4 video that you're able to play back, utilize just like any other low res video file on your computer. What I like to do actually is find the .lrv and then change the name to something like uh, underscore proxy .mp4. So what that's going to do is change all of these then you go to apply all. It says, are you sure you want to change the extension from .lrv to .mp4? Yes, I do. And we'll apply it to all. So now I have a proxy file that is the same number as my video, but it starts with GL. So the proxy files start with GL instead of GX. And we can look at the video files. These are GX012358. And this proxy file is GL012358. I can preview it here. You can see my computer scrubs it back super fast. The interesting thing is that Premiere is smart enough in its proxy attachment system to know that if all the files are there and they're sequentially numbered in the same way, then it'll automatically link all of those as long as it's on a folder to folder basis. And so that's why I save these in the same folder. I just go to folder by folder in the same way in my project and I go to H10 skate and then select all of these, right click, proxy, attach proxies. So we're not going to create them this time. We're just going to attach them. And then I'm going to go find where my proxy files are. And so I have in my folder, you see the video and then the proxy folder. It's looking for one, two, three, five, eight. So I'm just going to click on the first one, hit OK. And it's locating all of that media. And now if you look at the proxy file area, it says I have proxies attached for everything. And if I were to double click this, you can see I can scrub through this and it's really slow. Now when I toggle the proxies on, it's incredibly fast, which is 
amazing. So that's a 60 FPS clip, 4K, 4x3. Um, this is a 5.3K, 60 clip. If you've ever scrubbed through a long video trying to find that exact moment or just looking for the motion in your clip, you know how arduous it is to find this stuff. You can see my computer when I untoggle proxies. This is what it's doing. Toggle proxies. Boom. And the amazing thing is if I had a 120 FPS clip here, the proxy file is still 120 FPS. The only caveat is the LRV files for 240 FPS clips are at 120 FPS. And now if I wanted to use my keyboard shortcuts like uh, JKL, this is playing back 4X and it's just incredibly, incredibly fast, especially if you right click and go to playback resolution, make sure that's on a quarter. Pause resolution, if that's also a quarter, then you are gonna have a screaming editing time. One last thing on proxies is if you end up doing a replace with After Effects composition, the proxies link up. You just find them here with this little checkbox. So if I wanna turn on my proxies, they'll work in After Effects just as easily. And it's really nice for things like After Effects when you're doing scaling and layers and, and whatnot. Um, but you have to make sure that you uncheck these boxes before you go back to Premiere or before you export. Because After Effects is different than Premiere in that it will export out the proxy file instead of the full resolution file. So just make sure you uncheck that before you go back to Premiere for the dynamic link. In Premiere, you never have to worry about these proxy files when you're hitting export. So even if I have these proxy files while I'm editing and I go up to file export, it's gonna go ahead and swap those automatically and it's always gonna give you that high resolution export. All right, thank you once again. I'm Abe Kislevitz. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. This proxy editing has completely changed the game for me personally. I can't do a single project without it. So if you like this video and you haven't already, subscribe. If you have any questions, comment below. And remember to grab that download of the ingest presets in the description below. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next one.